Welcome to Catch the Fire Boulder. Um, Mon I am Mona Vick, and um, I'm a founding member of the church, and just we're here to to talk about um, Samuel this morning and a message that he received from the Lord called "Fill Your Horn with Oil." And that's taken from First Samuel 16. Um, God sent Dan, excuse me. God sent Samuel to anoint David the king. Um, as we know, Samuel was the prophet or the priest. <laughs> Samuel was the priest of Israel. He was over hearing from God for the people and being and, and leading them. The people became rebellious and looked around them and said, I want to be like everybody else. We want to be like everybody else and we want to have a king. And Samuel became depressed and I know that many people suffer with that same issue, with the same issue of depression, mental illness, so forth. A lot of us um, allow that depression to stop us from doing what God has called us to do. And today I want to tell you that Samuel suffered the same thing, but God said, fill your horn with oil and go and do what I've asked you to do. So today we're going to talk about that and how he overcame that same issue and how he anointed King David. So in 1 Samuel 16, we're going to just go ahead and read those, those scriptures and then we're going to just take it apart. Now, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn? How long will you be depressed for Saul, saying, I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceful, peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the anointed is, with, is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as a man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made, Shh, forgive me if I say these wrong, but Shema passed by and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet the youngest. And there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, 
send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and bright eyed, so that means he was red and scruffy and go and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him. So he poured all the oil in and then he poured it over his head and it dripped down over him. And he anointed him in the midst of his brothers and the spirit of the Lord came upon him from the day from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. All right, so let's take this apart a little bit. So Samuel, <clears throat> as I said before, Samuel was depressed and God said, get up from there. Anoint your, fill your horn up and go. I am sending you, Jesse. So Samuel <clears throat> was in a great depression, but God had the answer. You don't need to fear, not the enemy, not the voices around you, not your past, because God will make a way. He will always make a way. He said to go and, in, and um, he said, go take the heifer. He gave the strategies. He said, this is what you need to do. And God made the way that where there seemed to be no way, God made the way. He said, they're going to kill me. Don't be afraid. I've got the way. So he went and he went to Jesse. And Jesse's, Jesse was, um, and his sons were sanctified. They were called holy. They were set aside for God's work. Okay? Now, Jesse's boy, guy, excuse me, Jesse's sons did a lot of different things. They were in the army. They, um, they were in business, they were doing different things, and in each thing they were in, they were consecrated for the Lord. That means that in each area of business, well, in each area of our lives, we have an influence for the Holy Spirit. Whether we're in education, like I have been for the last almost 30 years, um, whether you're in business, whether you're in school, whether you, what, no matter what you're doing, you have an influence for the Holy Spirit. You are consecrated to serve the people around you for the Lord. Okay? God called Jesse and his sons to that service. And he didn't just call six of his sons. He called all of his sons, even the least among them. So, as they went through, he said, Oh, this one has a good appearance. This one is strong. This one is that. But Jesse didn't see in his youngest son, who was out with the sheep, out in the sheep dung, out in the sheep fold, out there, he said, ah, he's the youngest, he's, he's not much, but God sees all, and he even sees you right where you are, whether you were like Sam, Samuel and depressed and said, oh, it's hopeless. God doesn't see me. Nobody sees me, but the truth of the matter is that he does see you. So t take up your horn and get ready to go because God has a strategy just for you. Let's continue to look at that strategy. So he anointed David the least of these. God desires to out the least and make them kings. He found David and he anointed him. Samuel said, are these it? Go. He said, no. So Jesse said, no, I have Je David out there. He said, go get him. Brought him in and God said, this is it. 
Samuel anointed him, and then he prepared him. Was David king the day that Samuel anointed him? No. David had to prepare. Saul was still king, but in God's eyes, David was the king. God will always see you as your destiny. God sees you as your destiny. He will prepare you for your destiny, but he sees you as you will be. He sees you in the prophetic. He sees you. Our place, our mission is to go and call out the Davids that are hiding in the field. Our mission is to take the gospel out. Our mission is to go out and see who God sees. See the least of them. See the children who are ready to go into their destiny. God, we, God wants us to see with his 2020 vision. He wants us to see. He calls out the Davids and we need to see them. He has called the, us priests and kings to f- um, full of authority and power through the Holy Spirit. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Priests and kings in Revelations 5, 9 through 10. Let's take a quick look at that. Revelations 5, 9 through 10. <clears throat> and they and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and every tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. You have, <clears throat> we have been called kings and priests. Jesus purchased people from all over, every tribe, every tongue, every people group, every nation with his blood. We have, you have caused them to be king to be a kingdom of priests for our God and we will reign over the earth that means not later but now he is the king now and we have the authority to reign now in 1 Samuel 10 in 16:7 the Lord does not see as man sees for man looks at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. As you share the gospel, listen to the Holy Spirit. He will allow you to see and hear with his heart. He will allow you to see the people that you are in contact with, the people that you have influence over. He will will allow you to see them and hear them or to see them with his heart. He has a message for each one of them. So listen, be in tune to him. Don't uh, miss the Davids by looking at the natural. See the Davids by being <clears throat> led by the Holy Spirit. In 1 Samuel 10 11, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. The anointing that took David from the field anointed him king in the midst of obvious opposition. David was made king. He was made king, as I said before, that very day he was made king, right in front of his brothers. His brothers who ridiculed him when he went to went to um, give them food when they were facing Goliath. His brothers who saw him as little David, who didn't respect the call that God had called upon, had placed upon him. 
Those were his brothers. Do you have siblings that don't see the call that God is on you? Don't listen to the voices. Rise up and listen to God's voice. Do the things that God has called you to do. Sometimes we have voices that are afraid because of the call that we have that God has on us. Sometimes you have to follow Jesus and leave your brothers and your sisters behind for a time, but God will restore. He's good at that. And I believe that he did that for David. Listen to the Spirit. Tune into them. Be in, tune into the Spirit. Be humble. Intimacy comes from turning your heart towards God, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and walking humbly with your God, just as David did. We know that David failed, that he messed up so many times. But when he did, what did he do? He repented and he turned towards God. If you have messed up today and you think, oh my word, there is no way that God could ever use me again. That is not true. Repent, cry out to the Lord. He will forgive you and he will restore you. He is so good at reconciliation and he has not forgotten you he has not forgotten you so repent and turn back to him just as David did oh Samuel let's go back there to him he is a man after God's heart a true hero he seems so, when you read through First uh, and Second Samuel and through the his, histories of the Old Testament, Samuel is such a natural person. He had his ups and downs and he had his times, but he loved the Lord his God. He loved him. And just like I was talking about in, in the beginning, he was so depressed because of the of the people and the desire that they had for anybody but God and we as we know as we live we work through the reading through the histories we know that time and time again they turned against him, God and followed their own ways and as a leader of God you know he had to be so frustrated with the people at times and then after they asked for a king and after Saul was, was anointed king and Saul li was, um, you know, was, he walked for God for a time and then Saul became arrogant and thought he could do things in his own way and then he sinned and he refused to repent. He refused to turn towards God and and repent. It was his way or and or the highway, his way and 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 that was it. He was so arrogant and then Samuel was just he was heartbroken and so hurt by Saul. And then he became so depressed. He's like, oh God, it is hopeless. How many of us at times get that way? It just, troubles come, troubles come. And I know with the COVID and the things that we have, have dealt with in, in these few years, things have come and it seems like trouble upon trouble upon trouble happens. And then we get down and then our eyes tend to go towards those troubles and we take our eyes off God. And you know that had to have happened to Samuel. God time and time again had done miracles and marvelous things in Samuel's life and then just 
oh, he just got to that part, that point where troubles upon troubles had happened and he would just so down, so downcast. And finally, God said to him, Samuel, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get up, son. Get up, my daughter. Get up. Get up, son. I'm still God. I haven't changed. I still have a plan for Israel. I still have a plan for my people. Get up. I have a king. I see him out there in that field. I see him with the sheep. I see him out there dirty and sweaty and I see him. Get up, Samuel. Fill that horn. Fill that horn with oil. Put your eyes back on me. Worship me. Praise me. Get intimate with me. Put your eyes on me. Come face to face with me. That's how we become intimate with him again. If you've gotten your eyes off of him, put your eyes back on him. Fill your horn with oil. Put on the worship music. Get down on your knees and pray. Repent. Come back. And that's what Samuel did. Samuel went. He went and he anointed David. He went, he sacrificed the lambs, the rams. He went, he did his, his offering, he anointed David. They had their time of, of celebration. And then he went to Ramah. We don't hear too much of Samuel after that. because Samuel was old by then. And Samuel spent his time with the Lord and then Samuel died. And you know, he had to have, have had to go into his rust knowing that he had done what his God had called him to. And that is a time of celebration. And you know, it is time for us to get up, fill our horns with oil, and go out. Whatever he's called you to, get up, brush yourselves off, fill your horns with oil, and go forth and do what the Lord has called you to do. Because it is time, it is that time, it is his time, it is your time. He has not forgotten you. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for whoever watches this, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that it is not, you have not forgotten us, Lord God. And we will wash ourselves off. We will pick up our horns, Lord God, literally, figuratively, whatever, Lord God. We will get intimate with you. That means we will press in. We will be face to face with you, Holy Spirit. We will get in intimately with you we surrender we surrender our wills to you we surrender our way to you because it is not about us it is all about you jesus it is all about the way that you want it is all about your way it is all about your decisions it is all about what you desire god and Lord, we surrender our lives to you. We surrender our families to you. We surrender our dreams to you. We surrender our church to you. We surrender our nation to you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, that you have not forgotten us. And Lord, whatever you desire, whatever you desire from us, Lord God, we desire to follow you in every way. We desire to follow you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to our message. If you'd like to know more about us or would like to give online, 
please visit us at ctfboulder.com. We hope you have a blessed rest of your day.